Okay, we are now broadcasting. Oh shit! That 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 pretty much does it for my sound check. I should redo this. Hold on, we are sound checking still technically, so here we are. Um, Coming to you live. Okay, let me turn you up a little, Kwame, because you're still a little low on my end. No. Well, maybe not too low. All right, David, can I get a sound check from you real quick? Can I get a Can I get a hoya? Oh, yeah. Well, that's okay. That's <clears throat> this is me that being is loud. excited. And then in normal cases, this is hopefully how All right. I'm going to talk. But we'll sound check right. is good. So welcome everybody to the Paracausal Podcast live. This is a reshoot of an episode we did back on I think Friday night. Um, we kind of, I reviewed the, the, uh, footage slash audio and realized that it wouldn't make that great of an audio podcast for anybody who was listening. And I was, you know, in trying to acknowledge that that was of course where we started our podcast, I, I wanted to make sure that there's still a quality product there for those users. So we're reshooting. We're just going to go over the topics a little quicker. My battery to my controller is dead, of course. And uh, and then oh, now I'm dead as well. Uh, we're gonna go over the topics that we spoke about on Friday, which is just a general review of Wish Queen, and um, how we feel about it, and then uh, kind of go from there. So, the first thing and the main thing. Thank you for the tea bag. Yep. The first thing and the main thing I want to talk about. I think you know, generally speaking, there's a lot of comments. I mean, the Witch Queen has been hugely successful. <laughs> Uh, I'm playing it right now. We're all playing it a lot. Let's introduce everyone because we got Kwame in here for the first time, technically, kind of. Oh, right. You're right. So, yeah, I, I, I just <laughs> took off again. I introduced us as the podcast, but not together. So, yeah. I'm Raul. David is here as well. David, introduce yourself. That's me. I love Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I never That's let true. you actually. No, no, it's fine. Yourself. It's perfect. I'm sorry. Uh, we're also joined by Kwame. Say hello, everybody. Say hello, Kwame. It's me. I'm Kwame. Uh, how, how do you know us? We play Destiny hmm. together, like, all the time. We play, we play Destiny together all the time. Yeah. Every, everybody's, everybody's great. Like, the best fire team ever. So I think yeah. I got you nice. into, that's a very nice thing to say, yeah. I think I got you into wow. this whole little addiction, and it's been kind of one of those, the rest is history type deals ever since then. So, we're happy to have you, just cause we're, just like we're happy yeah, to have you absolutely. on the team. So thank you for being on the show. Uh, again, because you were already here once, and then you were also graciously agreed yeah, to indulge me on reshooting this. So thank right. you, I appreciate it. Uh, I like, I like this stuff, man. Anytime. Yeah, no, it's fun times. I, I always enjoy doing it. Sometimes too much, which is why it takes an hour and a half sometimes to do <laughs> normal stuff. Anyway, uh, let's talk about the Witch Queen. It's a pretty successful DLC expansion, whatever you want to call it. It's Everybody's so talking it's about it. Time. Everybody's playing it. It's putting Destiny back on the charts again, over and over again, like it kind of always does. Uh, anytime You're there's not a playing big... Witch Queen, are you really playing Destiny? Hold on one well, second. I mean, no. Technically, I think. But that being said, I don't know why I have... Okay, never mind. <clears throat> What else okay, I'm back. Do? Sorry about that. Hey, welcome back. Uh, what were you saying, David? Can you do anything if you don't have Witch Queen at this? Well, no, you can. You can just do like free stuff. You know. You do yeah. There, there's, there's can you come free. Come to the Throne World. You can. Yeah, you can. Okay, never mind. Yeah. That's good stuff. But generally speaking, you, you know, the point you're making is that you are locked out of a lot. You know, so when you much. don't get the new DLC, so like it doesn't surprise me. Uh, Destiny being as successful as it is, generally speaking, that there's not a lot of retention and rebuying of DLC. Uh, in this DLC, we got a campaign. We got changes to the Void 3.0, or we got Void 3.0, which is cho changes to the Void subclasses. Uh, we got weapon crafting. Uh, we got a new weapon type in the form of a glaive, and we got a raid, along with a new six-man activity for the season. And a new seasonal story in the form of Operation Elbrus. We're going to go over a couple. Well, we're going to go over as much of that as we can. So, talking about the. Huh? What was that? 
Operation Eberflus. <laughs> Operation Eberflus. That's fine. Uh, That's good. Talking about the campaign first. I, I, when I went over and talked or thought about what we talked about, I realized that we didn't do a really good job of separating the campaign story from the campaign legendary difficulty, which is kind of like the one of the primary ways we've engaged with the story. So speaking about the story itself, how did you guys feel about the overall story of the witch queen, which was essentially, Oh my God, the hive have the light, but why? And then we have to figure out why. And then most of those answers are either like head scratchers in and of themselves, leaving us with more questions than answers or, uh, just really sad. The answers are just really sad. It's really sad. You know, I was I was left with the impression that um, we have the light because we do. That's, that that's was why. the overall end of the story. Just because. Yeah. Just like, because. Well, are because we good people? Nah, not really. We just have it's it. paracausal. It's paracausal. It just is that way because we say it is. But yeah, so the story, I think, you know... Bungie advertised the game or the story of this expansion really heavily. They were like, this is the biggest, like the most story that we've really got planned and that we've ever done yet since like the Taken King and on and on. And um, I mean, now that I think about it, this, the Taken King story was heavy in cutscene, but not particularly like, you know, extravagant as far as an FPS, an average FPS goes. So, you know, maybe I should have seen the writing on the wall with that, that their expectations, or that my expect expectations should still be a little bit low. But generally speaking, what I'm saying here is that I found the story to be, I mean, didn't really provide me with very much at all, other than like, man, I wonder why the Traveler just gave the light to these guys, because they're kind of... You know, definitely certified genocidal maniacs. It uh, was okay. So here's the thing. Let me let me add on to that because I thought the story was really cool, and then it was really fucking weird because it was it was satisfying to me and good up until the very end when they just kind of we killed Savathun. Spoilers, and then immediately afterwards we like. What was it? We confiscated the body, but Imaru got away, her ghost. Yeah. And Ikora said, that's good enough. And everybody on, all three of us were like, I don't understand how that's good enough. That's... Like no, the whole, the no. whole thing we've been doing for the whole thing has the, been... The whole thing. <laughs> has been doing this. What I'm doing right now is crushing ghosts. So right. it's just like, why would we not follow up? No, but like, I, I don't, and I don't want to get ahead of ourselves because now we're talking about the end before the beginning. But oh, the, okay. the point okay. is, is just like, you know, from the start, there's this mystery of how did it happen? What's going on? We're following around a supercharged Savathun as she's throwing around, uh, you know, supers at us. And we can't figure out how this happened. And we go on this mission to discover how it happened. And we kind of get there in the form of these, like, memories of Savathun that we recover. And then we find out, as we recover more and more of those memories, we find out what Savathun's initial plan was, how she got resurrected. And finally, she reveals her to herself, herself to have been watching us the whole time, which essentially lets her know what her previous self's plan was. Because the big twist here is that she didn't know that she was who she was or why she had the light because she had just been resurrected and and people who are freshly resurrected don't have any memory of their past life. Which cool. I find, I find hard to believe thing. based off her interactions with her throughout the campaign. I find it hard to believe cuz like true. She wasn't acting like somebody that just had no memory of who she previously was. But she is that kind of a cunning person in and of herself, I guess. I guess. Yeah, that's a lot of explaining oh it God. away for me, my friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But would she be that I'm same person that. if she's reborn? Like, if she's born a new person with no memory of her past self, would she still be as cunning? Well, Bungie says yes, and if you don't believe it, fuck you. That, that's basically yeah. what we were left with, with this story. So, and again, like, don't get me wrong. The stories for 
Destiny have never been out of this world amazing. Like the best part, the best storytelling in Destiny, I think, has always been season to season, and whenever they drop lore cards, the lore cards are always pretty fucking tight. But out, outside yeah, yeah. of that, like you know, the story is oftentimes kind of disjointed and confusing, and this is another one of those cases for me. So, what are you gonna say? Sorry. I'm I'm somewhat getting ahead of myself. I feel because I don't necessarily remember what part in the story this happened, but I do remember, and this kind of goes along with what Bungie's been doing <clears throat> with the latter years of Destiny in comparison to when Destiny was new, and they obviously didn't know coherently what they were going to do story-wise, and now they do, and they're showing it. Before, when we were looking up lore, when I was looking up lore, I remember the Books of Sorrow talking about the planets or the moons aligning and creating a god wave and, you know, killing everybody and all that shit. Yeah, so, you're right. There is there is a lot of payoff to things that if right, you were yeah. familiar with the lore beforehand, you're really it's really cool to see. And that's true. Like, there are some nuggets of like, oh, this is actually intriguing and related to destiny and like retconning and changes things that i barely or thought i had a pretty good understanding of before that's neat cool yeah. but like does that like do those but single or... do those single Please. points justify like the the purchasing price or me consider considering it like the best story elements of destiny no i i don't know like i still don't know that destiny's had like the strongest entry in that regard now that isn't to say that the campaign itself, the mission structure, isn't very interesting and cool. Because I thought that the missions and the campaigns that were were created were, one, extremely lengthy, and two, uh, pretty lengthy, yeah. pretty interesting in their, like, mechanic mechanics and the way that they wanted you to complete things. So, like, you know, they did some pretty cool things, right? I think, all, ultimately, the campaign was a success when we talk about it without its legendary difficulty and, like, you know, maybe not even thinking right. about it in terms of story. What did you guys think right. about the campaign in that respect? And then we can, of course, get into the more yeah. detailed legendary was... okay. campaign. So, so for me, for me, just taking it at face value, I honestly thought the campaign, there was a lot of setup. Like, it was a whole lot of setting things up for the future. I mean, I, I might Especially... be looking too deep. Considering the six but, months prior, the seasons, this was all about Savathun. Right, you got the payoff of, like, what Savathun doing and how Savathun, you know, how her plans kind of come into play. But there was also a lot of set of other things, like, um, pretty much Zavala's existential crisis when the light goes to the hive. Yeah. Uh, is there some potential there? Like, this is, there's some, the whole argument with, with uh, Zavala and Ikora. You know, is there some dissension amongst the vanguard? Are we gonna have like I jokingly said this when we were playing the campaign, but like, is there gonna be some sort of civil war arc um, between the different the different factions of the vanguard? Right, or or is there their separation, which also doesn't seem to be resolved yet? Is that gonna come into play in some sort of bigger fashion? Why would they show it yeah. if they if it wasn't right? Right, but that's, that's just me taking it at face value. I'm not big on Destiny lore, whether that's something that's even feasible or not. So I'm not I'm not stating that's my prediction. I'm just saying that some of the things that I thought about going through the campaign, like it was a lot of setup and a lot of subtle hints, things that may come back around in the future. Well, and and you know, you say that you're not big on Destiny lore, but that is, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. That is exactly what happens like you know Shaq scratches his ass in fucking season eight and when talking to the drifter and it actually means because he fought a dragon 600 years ago and it bit him in the ass while the drifter and it was actually the drifter shape shift like you know like it, yeah. it's, it's all shit that's like connected like that and they bring it back and, and don't get me wrong i think that that kind of storytelling is neato like i really do ah you got me kind of like have moments like that but you know that's the thing about these expansions is that each one of them brings so many questions and so many more new things that it's you know, and, and very little like real big payoff like yes we learned how they got the, the we learned how the hive got the light the answer is the traveler gave it to them 
That's it. Well, yeah. We didn't get any closer to the understanding of why that happened, how that happened. I didn't know the traveler was still alive making big decisions. You know, like, <laughs> like there's a lot more speculation that's available now, but at the same time that's just what they do. We it's found out that the ghosts more. that the hive have chose they were normal ghosts, but they chose to take on the hive. We get no conversation around Imaru bro about why that happened or how he might have been able to convince or trick other ghosts into doing it. It just is the universe has changed and we're forced to just understand that and maybe there will be lore later on but instead there was time set up time spent setting up things like you know Shaxx's uh you know kind of like loss of faith which by the way is something that happens in the darker timeline because the traveler just straight up bounces when they need him the most and uh not Shax, not i said zavala i said Shax, but i meant zavala didn't i uh zavala is yeah yeah zavala is really fucking pissed off <laughs> about that like on a really deep level so like yeah it's cool that they're dropping hints and i'm interested to see what that is but i also would have really invested like a lot more time in this story and been a lot more happy about it if it was a little bit more surrounding the the motives of the hive and you know the light like or what makes them more answers yeah so like just more questions and, yeah and, and they just kind of expected me to take it all at face value so like it, it feels like more of the same which is fine because i'm like i'm somebody who loves destiny but i was also expecting so much more in the way that they were talking about it leading up to it that's that's my point about the story yeah okay that's fair then we also kind of got to ask ourselves, what did they purposely, like, not talk about? Like, you know, what are they trying to, like, do in the background, so to speak? Like, I'm sure there were some topics that we left off of in the Season of the Lost or what was the last one? So, Beyond Light. That yeah. we just kind of dropped and there was nothing mentioned about it. Yeah, they're, they're, like, and, and that's actually a really good point because it, it, it kind of, like, leads into... Yeah, they've got seasonal content that releases story too, and you have you and you have to kind of expect them to have, you know, things saved or, or put aside for that, and that's fine. But like, you know, for a forty dollar expansion, I wanted a story that felt like it was at least somewhat self-contained. Is that you how know? much it was? Forty? Okay. Right. Yeah. At least the normal price. The normal um, price. We we all bought the the Lexus. Right. Exactly. Uh, now that that. That being said, and we're going to talk about Operation Elvis in a second, I, I really liked Operation Elvis. It felt great. So it, it, was, it was a pretty good story. So it's not like they're not capable of doing things like that. But maybe, it's, maybe it has to do with their format. Maybe, you know, ultimately I, I don't have any real inclination or idea about how or why they do the things they do. But I was expecting it to be a little bit more, I don't know. Like, like, you know, the thing that bothers me the most about the story itself is that everybody says it's like a detective story. And I, I didn't feel like a detective at all. I felt like I just went places and did shit like I always do. And, like, you know, eventually I had information that she didn't have, right, in the form of the hive being tricked. But, like, you know, that came at the end at the cost of, like, many, many hours. Um... How do you guys feel about it? Sorry, I want to I want to open the floor up to you guys a little bit more before I continue bitching. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, so, just to reiterate and specify, you want to know how we feel about it. The story. Just the story. Yeah. Um, for Witch Queen, not right, Elvis. not Operation Elvis, not Elvis. just the, just okay. Witch Queen from start to finish. Did you guys like it? Did you not like it? Were you just expecting more like me? I liked it. I want, I want and wanted more, and thought there was going to be more. That yeah, them not killing what's your name's ghost also pissed me off. By the way. Oh yeah, at the beginning of me, like the first couple of weeks of me playing Witch Queen, like the season risen Witch Queen, there was so much to do, especially with this new throne hold and everything here. But at the end, it just ended. It's just like okay, all right. And I felt like, not that it was lackluster, I just, maybe I hyped myself up for it a little bit too much. I right. Don't know. I, and I wonder the same thing myself. Like, is it oh, Bungie's you know fault or did I get too excited? I don't, I don't know. But 
I kind of feel like it was on the same level as Bungie's 30th anniversary thing, and I didn't like that. I just thought of that. I, I, it's like the 30th anniversary was just it was good, and then it got really tiring because I hate those dares of eternity. And here it's it, it's it's getting to be the same feeling. I'm just done with everything now, and this is the first season that I finished. The, um, the season I'm rank a, over rank 100 so quickly, and it's not a super long season like the last one was. <clears throat> right. It's just a normal length, or yeah, normal length one. Yeah, and, but, and I think. Does, would would ahead, you sorry. attribute that? Would you attribute that to just having to play season of the Lost for so long, being so hungry for new content that the the excitement just kind of pushed pushed you just like I'm gonna play this, I'm gonna keep doing this, wanna grind because with season of the Lost. It was so long. People were just ready for something new, and we yeah. finally got it, and it wasn't a lot. Then everybody's like, "Well, that's it's not enough." That's fair. I yeah, that. I mean, and and that's that's another thing that I I keep thinking about. Like, I came back to Destiny on Season of the Lost, mm-hmm. and um, as a result, I had the whole year's worth of content ahead of me to do in six months before the new season popped up. Mm-hmm. And what ended up happening was that I didn't just experience the Season of the Lost content, but I experienced Season of the Splicer and the Chosen. And, like, you know, just basically did everything. And I got the story in bits and pieces, but, like, I did experience the story. And, you know, because it's Destiny, I experienced it over the fucking over again. So by the end of that six months, I was invested and I was ready for more, just like Kwame was saying. But I have to remember, and I've said this before, that this is this new season and this new year technically represents the whole the starting over of all of that, right? So like mm-hmm. there's a lot of gaps and spaces where there was content that there's none and stuff that we're waiting on to happen in, in the following seasons that will look really good, you know, in seven or eight months or whatever. I'm trying to look for a lost sector and I cannot find it. Uh, and, and, you know, I think it's, it's, it's only fair that I acknowledge that like, there's more coming and I'm, I should, it'll probably look yeah. real great when it all comes together, but like consistently in destiny, when things are just, you know, judged on their own, I find them lacking personally. I find, I find myself saying that they're lacking. And so maybe that's just what this is that it was the story at least because the, the, it was just in such a great spot to like springboard off of and start telling like, you know, a more cohesive story but it's not as if this game is really structured for that. So maybe I was just like, you know, putting the cart before the horse on that one. Maybe. The story is one thing. I see your point. Yeah. And and that's all I'm saying. Like I don't want to I don't think I'm right inherently, but like there's something about it that I've just I wanted more. Um I I feel the same way. So that's why I'm I'm there with you. I just it was fun. It is fun. I'm done. I'm still playing, but at the same time I wish there was something that it was an enjoyable ride, like, but I kind of yeah, wish there was like, more to it. Yeah, exactly, because right now they, um, if you look at the, uh, well, I guess specifically I'm talking about the Season of the Risen now, but what we have looking forward to for the next couple of months isn't anything new. It's just like, okay, the Grandmaster is going to come out from a strike, you know like it always says, and the master version of the raid is going to come out, like it always says. Guardian Games is going to be the new thing, but other than that, it's pretty much... We haven't had Guardian Games in a while, have have we? Nah, it's been... It's... Yeah. It's been a while, actually. And that's neato, but, like, that's not... It's not putting asses in seats, as the phrase goes. Um, the, the story is one thing, right? Yeah, okay, we were all expecting more, and I feel like, unfortunately, that is common with Destiny. I was like, oh, I was just expecting a little bit more. Um, the Legendary Campaign, hugely successful, everybody loves it, except fucking any of us. Uh, you like it, you're okay with it. Okay, alright, that's accurate, I'm okay with it. So, the Legendary Campaign is being touted, lauded, all the different weird but like positive sounding words. You know, it's it's being like really, really lifted up and talked about a lot. Uh as if it's a hugely positive thing and super successful because it's a difficulty it's a it's a video game difficulty or it's a sorry. It's a difficulty in destiny that is uh 
you know, hard or challenging without it being uh, like equipment locked or without there being um, champions involved. That's people's. That, that's people. That's a big, huge gripe for a lot of the community right now. Is that uh, high-level content is equipment locked, and that uh, there are um, uh, whatever the hell the other things are called. I was just talking about them. Shit. Match game. Match game and no. Well, yeah, that is one of the equipment. Equipment locked and champions. That's what I meant. Sorry. So I agree that champions are a pain in the ass. I, I used to very much hate them, but I've gotten to you know get to a point where I'm not too disturbed by them. I'm certainly bothered by champion mods and what, you know, how they differ from season to season. This season in particular, overload champions are very hard to stun because of champion mods being as wonky as they are. Um, so, like, I get what the people are saying, but I also think that, generally speaking, I don't appreciate reducing my power level or having to play with so many negative modifiers on uh, you know working against my character to the degree that I think like oh yeah this is what I want to be the regular uh you know difficult mode or high level yeah. difficulty mode experience um my main gripe being like I don't appreciate my main few gripes being I don't appreciate revive tokens. I, I'm not crazy about acolytes dropping fire upon death, mostly because acolytes are very numerous in their uh, they're very numerous just generally. And when you kill them and you have to move through them, it prevents you from healing. It does damage to you, and it's just like I'm just being punished for moving. Like it's not like that fire doesn't last for an extremely long time. So, you know, it's just a lot of different things that just seem to work against us in a, a way that is so negative tiresome. that it just seems, yeah, tiresome, not very much fun. Yeah. Um, so I, I, didn't, I didn't like the legendary difficulty. I don't appreciate being power capped either. If my power level is above a certain level and the enemies are, you know, uh, or, or if my power level is way past a certain level, I get that you might need to make sure the other enemies are, you know, at a base level to, like, still compete against me and do damage, and that's fine. But, like, to to to, to neuter me by 15 levels and, and call that, like, balancing for difficulty, I find that to be kind of a joke. You know, at least when I fight champions, if I'm at the same power level as them... I can ki I, I'm relatively confident that I can kick their ass, regardless of the difficulty. And that, to me, it just seems very backwards that people think that that's positive. That, that, it just, and it bothers me. So, but that, that's how I feel about it. Well, I mean, why don't you go? Because I'm going to start off with the other end. Okay, so... Yeah, I echo a lot of the graphs that you have, mainly because we play a lot through a lot of the legendary campaign together. Um, the acolyte fire was a bit too much. Power capping was annoying. But to be honest with you, after grinding so hard to get to Grandmaster difficulty, I wouldn't have minded if the uh, legendary campaign was just an entire Grandmaster type of type of thing, you know. Well, if you, hold on. When you say that, you have to consider that Grandmaster also has, if you whole team wipes, you start over again. That's better than revive tokens. I mean, at least we can get each other <laughs> up as many times as we need to, you know? The way, I mean, the you, way have a good, you do work. have a good point there. Like, if they wanted to take us serious, if they wanted us to take it yeah. serious, they could have done that, and, and the message would have been pretty loud and clear there, right? Yeah, like we at least with Grandmaster. And they could have made it by can, encounter or whatever. They didn't need to like do back yeah. to orbit. Now, if you wanted to do boss battles with the revive token, I mean, I'd, I'd even be okay with that. But just getting to the boss battle or getting to uh, the final room in a in a dungeon or something like that, for the entire thing. Not the entire thing. No, that I, I'm speaking out of context. I was I was fighting, trying not to die. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, man, uh, definitely would have preferred some like grandmaster level type of co type of content with that. I, I wouldn't have minded champions, honestly. Champions would have been fine, you know. I mean, it sucks. I would have minded that the you would have minded Davis. Davis, you would have minded. 
But I would have just took it as preparation for whenever the Grandmaster dropped. I would have taken it, but I would have complained about it. But I'm not entirely like... I'm not gonna just shit on it because I did have fun playing it. It's just that there were so many things and I was just like, why is that there? Like, what's the purpose of that? Well, look, yeah, no, you're right. And I, you're, I should have been more fair. Like, there were moments where I was like, man, this is like exciting. It is exhilarating to be under this much stress. But like, it's one of those things where like even the slightest mistake or fuck up leads to you're gonna have to respawn and start the encounter over again. And that was where I was just like, oh, man, like, I, you know, a lot of people were saying, it was like, well, you just have to be moving around all the time and you have to have, like, good weapons and this, that, and the other. I've got a bunch of good fucking weapons and I have no problem moving around. The issue was is that, like, if I move around in the wrong moment, I have to start over again. And that's just, because like, a waste of my fucking time. Because of Acolyte Fire. Because of Acolyte you know, Fire, or because of something, something like that. Right, yeah. It's just because of something simple like that. Like, if I die because I didn't utilize cover, you know, that's on me. But, also, can we talk about the fact, if we're going to complain, and I am, Acolyte Fire is almost fucking invisible after the initial drop. Like, once it goes down, but, it, like, it exists so for strong. a little bit. Yeah, like, it's bullshit. It's but, so strong. It's ridiculous. Yeah, fuck Acolyte Fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no. I just felt the over the legendary difficulty to be overbearing. And so, then it's like, come on, man! I have three characters to get through this with, and I have to keep restarting the whole the whole level after I die, or after not even after I die. Like I could have, you know, two fire team members utilize uh, all the revive tokens, and if the wrong person dies, it's like, yeah, well. You gotta start over. That yeah, was... that was really, really upsetting, and that happened frequently. The it would have been a a different experience for me if there were no revive if revive tokens weren't the thing, and if oh, what was the other thing that bothered me? I already forgot. What did you guys mention? I'm sorry. <laughs> It was one in, one Revive tokens, guys. acolyte fire. No, it wasn't acolyte fire. It's annoying, but... Yeah, I mean, that basically echoed a lot of what Raul said because we did play through most of it together, but... I think that was, those are my main gripes. Just the revive tokens, acolyte fire, and the level capping. Level oh, capping, that's what it was. Yeah. Thank you, dude. The level capping. Okay, so the level capping and the... Um, are you freaking serious? What was the first one? Come on, brain. <laughs> Help me, guys. It's a reshoot. Um, the level capping, acolyte fire, and... Something else. Shit. Dude, I need that something else. <laughs> that's the one. Oh, God. See, this is the thing. I can bitch about it, and then once I bitch about it, I'm happy. I'm fine. Like, I can let it go. I don't even think about it. Damn it. <laughs> like, uh, this is my moment to release. Why are you not following along? <sighs> all right, all right, all right. Fine, fine, fine. It was good. It was good enough, and it was entertaining. But at the same time, it irritated me because I didn't have enough time. I didn't have enough time that I... I what? Hold on. How am I trying to say this? I didn't have as much time as I wanted to, so I spent all of my time in Destiny, in the new DLC, just and in the mostly in campaign, the legendary campaign, dying right. and reviving. Because, like I think Juan said, the wrong person died, and then I would have to cover them because, yeah, they got a revive token. But furthermore, it's that stupid timer that drove me insane. Like, yeah. oh, you got 20 right. seconds. And the revive and timer, timer, right? Right, the you get 20 timer. seconds, and if you revive them in 10 seconds, the next time somebody dies, that's the continuation. You got 10 seconds, not 20, or whatever the hell it was. It's just like one long timer that just continues. It's horrible. Um, yeah, it's pretty atrocious. It, so I still need to get through it on my Hunter. I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm not going to do it for a while, I'm because as you say... It's also time-consuming. That's the worst part about it. Like, it, it's it cool, is, yeah. the missions are lengthy, and that's great when you're thinking about it in terms of content alone. But, like, this stuff is going to take forever for me to get through, and I'm not super excited about that in the first place. That's, not that's to be negative. I get through it on my Titan. 
not to be entirely negative. Like, I'm not saying that there aren't some things that were done cool or that was without fun, like I said. But it's just kind of too much. It's too much. Oh, God, I'm being killed. It's too much. Too much damage on me. Like, like for me, one thing I really love, the glaive was my MVP. Like, it, it's such a cool weapon, you know? I, I, at some points, I just felt like a gladiator, especially with the perks I put on it. Um, and I'm not even going to get into weapon crafting because I feel like we're talking about that pretty soon. So I'm going to keep that to myself. Um, but yeah, the glaive is probably one of my favorite things about the Witch Queen DLC. The glaive is really fun to use. Glaive is awesome. I have a really good time with it, yeah. Uh, no, I think that's that's actually fine. I don't want to go over the campaign too much more. Um, you know, the glaive was great. Weapon crafting itself, how do you guys feel about that one? <clears throat> it's oh. okay. It would have been, well, you know, I'm not, I can't keep saying it would have been better, but I, I'm going to try to say it, it the last time. It just kind of felt like everything is way too fucking expensive. You can't really like follow through. You can do one or two. You know what I mean? Like craft yeah. one or two, but everything is just way too expensive. No, it, it I don't have any of th those freaking Doritos left. <laughs> oh, Doritos. Is it it, it may are. be my fault for, for assuming this, but I was thinking it'd be more along the lines of like, you know, you can go and craft a weapon, not like just like that, but. You know, you go do a couple couple strikes, get like, collect some resources, and you know, you can try to get a weapon that with a good roll. But now I can pretty much avoid weapon crafting altogether and still be just fine. <laughs> I thought it would be more necessary, I guess that's what I was getting at. Oh yeah, that's definitely true. I thought it would be more necessary as well. It's just like yeah, it's cool. It's new. It's I'm, I mean I think we're all happy it's that it's not though. more necessary considering how it works. I think the way that I figured it would turn out, like, I thought a lot of people walking into this were going to think it was going to be something more. But, like, the what I was expecting out of it more than anything was if you really wanted to engage with it, it was something that would be there for that, you know? But, like, generally speaking, it's not going to be something that everybody uses, nor is it going to be something that... Oh, shit, I have to shoot these things. Nor is it going to be something that, like is uh, going to replace your inventory. Because nobody would like that. If that became the absolute necessity, nobody would appreciate it. So I'm also going to die. Oh, no, I'm, I'm okay. Nobody would like that. And so I, I, and I wouldn't have liked that. So I'm glad that it didn't turn out to be that. Uh, so what it is now, what I think it is now, is for people that are like really serious players that want one or two guns, and it's only off of a very short list anyway, and they want to be able to craft those guns and get the best perks. And that's great, because like if I get really seriously into a gun, or if I decide that I really like something, then sure, shit yeah, I'm going to try and get the very best version of it. Or in this case, right, with you were, what you were saying about the glaive, the Enigma is great, and yeah, I want the best perks for it, because I had to craft it in the first place, right? But... The problem with it right now is that some of those perks are broken. Some of them are not working at all. And so it's like, well, that's not cool. Other perks, other and enhanced perks, don't actually do anything to great effect. Like there are some enhanced reload perks that increase reload speed by 0.2 seconds, which is crazy because, as you've wow. said, it's really expensive to upgrade into those enhanced perks. Mm -hmm. And so, like... I'm I'm happy that we're not all engaging with this system that A doesn't work so great and B isn't very valuable to everybody right now that we're not forced to. And I'm also happy that for the people that really want to, they can play and get the very best versions of the shit that they want. However, that being said, on top of all of that is that the list of guns that is out there and available while it will get larger is very small right now. And so I have a hard time even seeing right this moment yeah what the purpose of weapon crafting is my personal belief with their at least uh with the way they've implemented it is that this is kind of like their beta version because they weren't really sure what weapon crafting would do to the game so they designed a certain set oh, of rules fair. 
and they let it go with a certain set of weapons and they're examining their data and they're going to make adjustments based on that. Because they even said that, like going into Witch Queen, that while weapon crafting is going to be there and available, it's not, it's going to be iterated on consistently. Which is, just this, which is just them saying, like, if shit's fucked up, we're going to try and make sure it is fixed. Like, it's not going to be yeah. some shit that we just drop entirely, right? So... You know, so it's, it's not a, quite a finished product. It's in beta testing, like you said. Right, but they wouldn't say that, right? It's just out under these very specific circumstances. So that's how I feel about it. It's there, and it'll get better. I imagine, and I imagine as it gets better, it will become a much more vital part of our Destiny experience. But that won't be for a long time, probably. Vital, that's the word I was looking for earlier. It's not vital. Like, I can really do without it. Right, and and I'm happy for that because it's expensive and kind of a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. It is. It's tiring. Didn't you say that you don't have enough time, so every time you get a red weapon, you delete it? Yeah, like I, I'm not gonna use just because I want certain elements off of the gun. Like the, even the process of getting weapons or getting uh, resources and the frames to craft is one that requires you to use guns that might you might not want like if they have interesting perks that, and yeah. and the whole point of it is that they wanted people to use guns and perk combinations that they might not have previously i get that and that's you know that's cool but like making it a requirement to engage with crafting means that i'm also less in, inclined to engage with crafting just like from the onset and that's fine like i said i don't need to be that guy <laughs> i'm not that guy in general in video games I like I have some pretty good things, but I also don't particularly like farming for crazy great things, you know? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um So that's my feelings on crafting. I feel like you guys are kind of in a similar boat. Like we'll see how it progresses, but I'm not expecting much. And it wasn't a vital part of my experience. Or like I wasn't one of those people saying that the game required it, because there were people that were. The game that the game required you to craft? Or? Yeah, no, or needed a crafting like component to it. Um, I don't know if I agree with it. With well, some people needed. felt like it did, you know, and I'm all I'm saying is that we don't seem to be part of that group. Okay. Yeah. All right. Interesting. <clears throat> I'm just thinking about like. Honestly, at this point, I'm, like I said, I'm past the season, I'm done with the season, but I still am trying to finish a couple of other things that I haven't been able to do that are actually, I have to do wellspring so I can get some weapon patterns so I can get more weapon patterns so I can finish the, like, the final quest, I think, for the evidence board, so I can actually start crafting the uh, exotic, exotic glaive. Glaives. Yes, exactly. So, there's a lot of stuff I have to do to get there, and <clears throat> I looked it up, and there was a, uh, apparently there was a bug that got fixed sometime around March 10th, so where the last quest come to pass and tarnation weren't dropping from wellspring um there was just like a bug that said that the drop rates were minuscule so you just couldn't craft the exotic glaive because all of that got halted pretty much since you couldn't get the pattern for the first weapons that you needed it's just it's so I, and that that kind of cool. that, I was just gonna, <clears throat> but, that kind of goes into what i'm saying about like you know, broken perks. It's like even the system in which you would use to craft these weapons or to activate the exotic quest this season is broken because it's connected to a system that is kind of underdone right now. And, it's, you know, that's, like I said, I'm not crazy about those uh, those exotic glaives right now. Like I thought, considering how difficult they are to get, I was just like, all right, I guess not then. <laughs> But, um, you know, for I the people that are, or the wow. people that are trying to knock it off their list, this is frustrating, you know, and that fucking sucks that they had to wait until, you know, three weeks until after they, the, 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 the stuff dropped to actually start getting these weapon drops to complete these yeah. quests. 
Unless that was some sort of, you know, set upon time frame that uh, that Bungie, you know, decided oh, was when they know, wanted those true. those start those know. things to start that's, dropping. That's a lot of stuff to get done for you to put a three week gap where I can't make any progress. Exactly my point. Yeah. It doesn't sound like one of those things. Yeah, you're a little low, by the way, Kwame. Oh, so, I'm sorry. No worries. Um, so yeah, that like we- weapon crafting is kind of like a. Like, I, I'm not saying I don't want it to be here. I'm like, you know, people are saying that they want Gambit out of the game. You know, like, I'm not one of those just people. Gambit, where, like, yeah, no, just Gambit in general. I just need okay. to leave. I'm not one of those people that's saying they need, need to quit with Gambit or with weapon crafting. It's in the game. I accept that it's in the game. And I understand that changes will be made to it before uh, before not too long, I'm sure. But, um, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not going to be one of the people utilizing it to that degree. You're not one of those get off my lawn guardians, right? This doesn't deserve to be here. Um, Back in my day, we just got got good rolls off of pure RNG. Right, and there are people that say that, dude. Exactly. Like, it's crazy. And you What's know wrong what? with RNG? As a side question, what um, what playlist activity have you guys spent the most time in because you enjoy it? Not because you have to like check something off. And I really like Gambit a lot, actually. Gambit more than Strikes or Crucible. I mean, I I don't like Crucible. Like I've been playing a lot of Halo lately, uh, which is, we, we kind of went over briefly on the uh, podcast when we did the initial shoot. I've been playing a lot of Halo lately, and it's making me realize how much I can't fucking stand Crucible. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's fair. So Crucible's out. Yeah, and I like I love the Vanguard strikes. They're great, but like I actually generally just do them for Pinnacle gear. Like it's just for the it's just for the thing. So I I actually do like Gambit. I'm always like, oh, let's do some more Gambit. Are we when I have a group of people? Yeah, I was, I was yeah. about to say like my answer to that question depends on whether I'm playing with friends or if I'm just kind of solo. If I'm solo, well, I mean, if it's the middle of the day, I kind of sneak on real quick in between. Like on lunch or something like that. So hopefully nobody hears this that I work with. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I'm good with a uh, good Vanguard Ops. Um, I don't really like Crucible that much unless I'm playing with you guys. Like, I'll go through and I'll struggle. Hey, hey, Kwame, quick question. When we played yeah. Halo just the other day for that like 40 minutes or whatever, was that more fun than when, when we played Crucible? It felt so good. Like, it was like <laughs> for forty minutes. Damn. Yeah, I it, bet. It wasn't for very long, Shit. but yeah, dude. Like, it, and, and I'm not again. Like, it's not fair to compare the two. I think, it, I, the I two, think it was. I think it was the game mode that we were playing though. Like every time we you know, respawn, you get new weapons. Uh, so if there was oh, no yeah, Fiesta. Like, yeah, Fiesta. There was no um, super o'clock. There was no. Somebody just using the same weapon to just really blast you from across the map, or you trying to figure out how Lamanar keeps you behind well, yeah, the wall. It, it, it's it's a balanced experience. That's yeah. what you're saying, and that's that's what I'm saying. Like Crucible is just generally so ugh to me. Now on the same vein, now we're talking about Gambit now, because Gambit changes did happen, and we we should also before yeah. we get too far in double back to Void 3.0. But in, in on the subject of Gambit, I enjoy the changes that were made to gambit on the technical side like when there are multiple invaders or not sorry multiple invaders multiple uh, actually that's been there for a while the multiple blockers but when the invaders on the on the field uh, apparently they say that when the invaders on the field he's supposed to take points away do you have you seen that i haven't seen that mm, no yeah like the, I mean, the inv- paid attention to there's it, supposed though. to be like the possibility of a sneaky invader who's just there draining points for the entire time, but I I I heard about that in patch notes and never actually saw it later on. But I do enjoy that there's more heavy ammo. I do enjoy that like the uh, mechanics of the bo- the the boss themselves has been changed to the degree that you have to go find the prime evils and then come back to the boss to do damage. That's you true. Know? I do the, enjoy the, that the, the envoys. The envoys, yeah. Yeah, I thought that was cool too. Find the envoys and then kill the primeval. Thank you. I got the order of that mixed up. But um, 
yeah, everybody else hates it. They say that it's awful. It's worse than it's ever been. There's more heavy ammo. There's more invasions that are fucking up the game. Everything's all fucked up. Every game that I have played has been more balanced than ever. Like, it's been a close match up until the last little bit. Even matches in which I was losing, we were able to come back from and do pretty good. Even if we didn't win. I feel like that's a success in terms of what they were asking for. They wanted it to be more balanced. They wanted people to feel like there was a chance if they could get their shit together to come back and win. And I generally have had a pretty good time doing all of that. So, I don't know. I I, I don't see it. Now, maybe they want more balance. Maybe they want, like... I <laughs> Or less balance? Less balance. Maybe they want... I, I don't know what they want or what is causing people to dislike it but you know it it it's it exists it's there it's uh it's got a really sick ass shader this season <laughs> oh yeah it came back didn't it what's it called oh gambit jade stone is available in the playlist by getting it like by uh like just playing it might drop for you in a playlist mission but it, it, it uh the the gambit seasonal uh shader is venomous and it looks badass venomous looks cool. yeah. so how do you guys feel about gambit yeah okay so i have a really good time with this gambit it's really fun i haven't gotten completely overwhelmingly shit on yet so when that happens, I guess I'll get back to you. Um, that being said, there's just... Hold on. I like the f there was yeah. a two-week period where Gambit PvP da or Gambit damage was scaled to PvE instead of PvP, and people were coming through the invasion right. portals with, like, Ariana's Vow and just body-shotting people. That wasn't cool. <laughs> okay, I'll yeah. say that that yeah. much. That was not neat. That was not neat. But um, outside of that, I have enjoyed Gambit. Go ahead, continue on with what you were saying. I wanted to make Gosh. sure I mentioned that, because if I didn't, you know, people would be like, what are you talking about? What about when Gambit was fucking beep, 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 beep? He's like, yeah, well, I, I know, and that did suck. <laughs> Besides that, yeah. I forgot about that. I completely forgot about that. That's mm, That doesn't work for Guardians because it's completely just off. Um, but in any case, I like the fact that they threw in more heavy for everyone. Like mm -hmm. Everyone can get the heavy, so it makes it just a little bit more even. At the same time, there's more Galahorn just everywhere. Well, fucking where. But there's also more damage on the boss, more damage available to take out blockers when needed, like, you know... It, yeah, I find the fact that there's... Just because there's more heavy and everybody knows that there's gonna be a block of heavy every single time we finish this, like, wave or whatever, people are just shooting rockets and using it on all of the ads, which is just clearing it out a lot faster. It's nice. Maybe that's what I like a little bit more, because it doesn't seem like it lags on that much anymore have you guys noticed that as well or is it just kind of like the same speed yeah it definitely feels like it goes and by it, faster i agree yeah it, and it's not just like all of a sudden and like okay they summon the primeval and they won and it's over yeah exactly it's more so kind of holds Gosh. everybody in place because the boss is just locked and you have to kill the primeval first first Right, like yeah. It. It's fun. And uh, hold on, I guess this is worth talking about because we just came from the conversation about, you know, uh, uh, the, the campaign, the legendary campaign. Like, a lot of people are talking about it because they don't like it. But then, you know, I don't know what it takes to balance a game. I just know that I didn't like playing the legendary campaign. Yeah. Just like a lot of people don't like playing Gambit in its state. But, like, you're also con you also have to consider that, one, it's Destiny which means that there are a lot of var variables at play depending on you know the players in the team and the weapons that they have and all types of things and then two um you know it has to be balanced around those variables in some form or fashion and they want to go for more fun and more engaging and not less so so giving people more heavy ammo might not seem like a great idea from somebody who doesn't enjoy getting rocketed in the face all the time mm. which is most people don't enjoy that but, like, you know, it might be the best idea to make sure the game mode itself stays engaging. Stays active, stays engaging. Isn't just, like, the normal, or the, the same thing over and over again. Yeah, I get that. 
How'd you feel about it, Koba? I don't remember if you went or not. I hadn't gone yet. You guys were just like you're really into it, so I was kind of letting you go with it. Sorry. Um, no, no, no. It's cool. So as far as Gambit goes, I haven't had one of those matches where I've lost from the very beginning. Like you know, Gambit used to be a thing where like, if you got off to a bad start, you're just fucked, and you spend the rest of the time. If you've got some good teammates, you could probably make a comeback, but you you were slim, slim, slim chances. You know, just trying to get back into the groove of the game. But now, with the way they've kind of balanced everything out, um, adding the heavy rocket launchers, you know, I mean the heavy ammo so much, um, invading. <laughs> You're just like, yeah, which equals, which equals rocket launchers. <laughs> which equals rocket launchers. I mean, it, it is what it is. We all know it. Um, yeah, I just feel like I have so many more good, close games, and that's what keeps you, like, invested in it, I feel like, Agreed. when you have those those games where like it could go either way like mm -hmm. we we drop in modes they're dropping modes they're invading we're invading they get their primeval we have a good chance to kill to go in and kill all invade and and get that primeval health back up so it's it's just a more fun high stress not high stress but high action High action, yeah. High action. Yeah. It's like just, it's just a good time. We've had games like where, like, I've had one game in particular where Christy was watching me play, and she was like, "Use your super," and I was like, "I don't think it'll be enough." She goes, "Use it." The boss is almost dead, and like by a hair's breadth, we've taken, we've come back and beaten the boss. Similarly, we've had games where like we've been fighting the primeval for a really long time, and it's at like primeval slayer like six. And I'm like, Christy, use your super. And she's been, you know, she's playing with us. I'm like, use your super. And she, like, thunder crashes the primeval and melts that motherfucker and it's over. Yeah. And you're just like, God, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, Gambit. Like, that, 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 that doesn't happen super often. Yeah, right. Where it's just, like, over in a moment. Well, I mean, like, it doesn't, it doesn't happen that, like, you feel super satisfied about Gambit, you know? And I feel like there's been more of that this season than last season. And last season was super fucking long, so, you know, it's got to mean something. There's also that. Uh, can we start this mission that I have to do? It's called Parasitic Pilgrimage. I forget about the worm. Wait, hold on. Yeah, as long as, as long as I can do it. Yeah, it's pulling it you in. The hell in. All right. So, with that, we, we kind of went right past kind of the elephant in the room. We talked about some important features, but we missed the thing that we were most excited for leading up to Witch Queen, and that is Void 3.0. Oh, man. Let me just say, okay, let me let me jump into this really fast. Just really fast. Because I'm having so much fun with a warlock just being completely broken. There's so much Bravo. I can do. Bravo. And it's just a good time. That's all. I'm, I, Yeah. I like playing as a warlock, I'm having fun playing as a warlock, I'm creating different builds, so there's a little bit of different, uh, what, build diversity for just specifically void warlocks, which is nice. It's gonna be exciting to see where it goes, uh, in the future. I don't know if, I know Arc 3.0 is coming next, but I don't necessarily know if they're gonna add more to void, or just, that's it, we're done, you know what I mean? That's all I got, specifically for a warlock. Pick up that war. Call me. Am I not supposed to pick it up? I have no idea what we're supposed yeah. to do. I think you're supposed to run through it no, with right. like all these different little points. There's going to be a bunch of points that we're supposed to run through and collect yeah, energy on. All of them. So, there's exactly. so, Cormain, how did you feel about uh, Void 3.0? How do you feel about it? So, Love Void 3.0, played through first as a Warlock, gotta say, feels, I feel like a god when I play Warlock Void 3.0. Nothing can touch me, I'm blowing up, I'm blowing stuff up, controverse holes, I'm getting my grenade back just like that. Um, Hunter was a different feel though, Hunter was like, once I like spec the build out for Void 3.0 instead of just trying to force my old build onto it, it felt good just going invisible. And just fucking up everything on my glaive and then suppressing everything. It just I felt like a ninja. Yeah, definitely with the hunter. Which is all which is always a good time. And unfortunately I don't have any experience with Titan Void three point but I'll let you speak on that. Ultimately, love it. No complaints. Please fix Hunter in Arc three Thank you. Mm -hmm. He drops the mic. 
Um, yeah, so so I, I also liked it a lot. I think that the void changes are really good. There's a uh, thing over here if you want to grab it. This is a little bit of an obstacle course, it looks like. Um, I liked it quite a lot, uh, the void changes for every class. I've tried it on the Hunter. The invisibility and the consistency of the vis invisibility is really great. It takes a little bit of tweaking, I feel like, on the Hunter to find something that feels right, quote-unquote. Yeah, for the Hunter builds, I just felt like it just... There was a lot changed with the Hunter build. There was some stuff taken out entirely and then, like, changed with all the builds. But for the Hunters in particular, they got a lot of things kind of edited out, unfortunately. Um, so, like, given the, the changes, it was kind of difficult to find something that worked perfectly. But once I found something, I, you know, it's right. You spent 80, you're right, 80% of your, uh, your time is spent, like, invisible, invisible. Like, unable to be spotted by the enemies. It's great. It's fucking wonderful. I'm worried about what that'll look like next season after all the mods go away. Because a lot of the seasonal mods are, you know void related uh but that's just particularly for my hunter for the warlock and the titan i think both of them will be pretty much fine outside of uh next season or outside of this season the warlock feels great just like what you were mentioning controverse holds getting grenades like left and right you know being able to apply the different changes to those grenades like being able to weaken enemies and things like that like so many options to just Okay, I guess oh, we were on a yeah. timer. She uh, yeah, I forgot about that. We are on a timer. The worm is going to die. So many options to just uh, like really go crazy with. So I'm grateful for uh, the changes that have been made, and I'm excited about the ones that are coming next. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's it. Same. And that's it, really, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's really cool. A lot of people in Crucible are complaining about the balance changes that come with Void 3.0. Uh, in particular because, like, you know, hunters are running around invisible a lot, warlocks are warlocks, and the titans are going fucking buck wild with their overshields, which make them very strong. I can I completely understand why people would be uh, uh, disturbed by that. But here's my argument for Crucible all the time. Crucible sucks balls. It's one of the least balanced multiplayer fucking game modes in any game. And it might be that way just because it's Destiny. And like I said before, it's hard to balance for all the variables of Destiny as a game and on any given character. But um, I, I find it funny that they're okay with some things and not with others, you know? Like, it just kind of disturbs me that, like, you know, balancing is totally cool with the chaperone headshots being what they are. <laughs> but, but, oh, pick up the worm, it's on my body. Um, but, like, for some reason, people having overshields this season, like, it's just going to be this season that's going to be this shitty. And then next season, the arc subclasses will also be very powerful. The, but this is like a balancing an issue, like a, or an issue in balancing that needs to be corrected right now. You know, like, it just seems like not being able to see the forest for the trees on this one, unfortunately. Oh, man, that's accurate and sad. But that's fine. Hopefully it gets cleaned up a little bit soon. Cause that's, I think that's just what it needs, a little bit more cleaning. And then it's good. What do you mean, though? Like, I, I just, I, I think that, if anything, this is them saying we don't give a fuck about balancing. It's more fun to not have it. And I agree. Damn it. I mean, I can't it's like deal. It's, it's like deal with the fact that it's not balanced. That's the fun of the game. Have have a good season. Next right. year, it'll be somebody else's turn to be it, broken. Exactly, and it, and that's what it is from season to season anyway. Like the meta shifts, and some shits just better. Just who gives a fuck? You don't care. Mm -hmm. You only don't care because it's not you. Like that's that's the only reason why you don't care. And I don't oh, care because it's it? not me. Like I, I don't like Crucible is so unimportant to me that like I I'm fine with it being a little unpleasant because somebody else has an overshield. I like yeah. the idea of us having options as players more so than I care too much about yeah. like overall balancing of what is already obviously a very hard to balance mode that they leave yeah, things is. unbalanced for months and months and years and years and that's totally fine. So who cares? Then there's always the challenge of trying to find a meta breaker, so to speak. Like everybody's using this one build, and you got to try to find a build that counteracts that, you know, to some degree. 
Right. It's still going to be broken. It's still going to be broken. You're still going to get fucked up from across the map. It's fine. You're going to get one shot. But just trying to uh, find a build that can pretty much, you know, at least compete with it. Piss somebody off that really... Yeah, they really took all their time and all their resources to make this broken build because they saw somebody on YouTube do it. Right. But that's the thing. People in Crucible do that. Like, build crafting has expanded to the degree that you can do that on your own. So if you want to fuck the people over who are going invisible or have overshields, then go ahead and pick up a void subclass and get a suppressor grenade. You know, run armamentarium on your fucking titan if it really matters that much to you. And start knocking those people out of the running and teach them that they can't do that. Like, you have the options available to you, but you want Destiny, you want Bungie to just change it. Like... I, I didn't say I don't I, I said I can't stand the legendary campaign. I didn't say take it out the game. I just said I didn't like it. But what the fuck? You know, on the other end it's like, nope, the void changes. You gotta take them back. I want you to roll that shit back, Bungie to start a petition. The crucible oh, wait, people are insane. Roll it back? I, at yeah, some I points I did see one. I did see comments about like the, the these changes need to be rolled back or at least rolled back in Crucible or something, and it's like, come on. Uh, Who the fuck wants I that? See, I didn't know. I'm a little bit uneducated in that. Uh, well, you know, that's what you get for paying attention to any of the conversation happening around the community, right? Like, the community is just filled with a bunch of crazy psycho assholes. Jesus. Of which I'm part of, by the way. I'm sorry. I can say it too because I'm one of them. Oh, wait. The crystal's right back there. I got it. God damn. Yeah, um, got it. All right. In any case... <clears throat> That's the what? What section was that? Technically speaking, that's that covers uh, Crucible, kind of. <laughs> playlist activities, Crucible. Oh, playlist activities. So we went over Gambit. We went over uh, Crucible to the degree that you pretty much all know I can't stand it. Like, I want to like Crucible because it feels so good to play. And I love competing against other people. Like, you know, I just like PvP games. But, like, Crucible is just so lacking in balance and structure. And it just needs so much love that I feel, like, very... Like, it's just... Like, you know, Kwame, you don't like playing Crucible all that much if you're not playing with us, right? No, I really, and, I just try to avoid it. I don't like what it does to my morale. And, and, and even when you do play with us, do you really feel like you're learning it or getting better at it with the more time that you invest in it? No, it's not. That's that's never supposed to be the case. I don't think it, I don't think Cruz was set up like that. It's either you're good at it, or like you get a good run, or you go up against go up against some people that aren't that good at it. Right. Exactly. That's exactly that's how it feels. feels like. Yeah. But I don't think I've ever just got better playing in Crucible. Like from one match to the next, you've been able to track your skill. Like, yeah, it's just that's not part yeah. of Crucible, and that's why I don't like, enjoy it. It's just like a total like, crapshoot. Because like in For Honor, and it just compares to a different game. It was a learning curve. Like eventually, I learned not to go get my ass whooped. Don't go looking for an ass whooping. Don't don't go looking for an ass whooping. But it's a PvP game that, as I play more of it, I got better. I don't feel that learning curve with with Crucible. Right. There's no curve. It's just a spike and a bumpy road. Damn. So yeah, and, and that's that's why I'm I'm such a hater of it, honestly. And and honestly, my my feelings get stronger and stronger on it the more that I played well, the more that I play well balanced, um, Crucible, or but not more, say, PvP games. What I will say is, when I get a good match, it feels so good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm just running around like killing people, like not because of an overpowered build, just because I'm just running around doing shit that's pretty much nobody else is doing, so nobody really knows how to like counteract it. Mm. Feels amazing. Oh yeah. It was simple. It was just running around with a glaive. I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna shoot you. I'm just gonna run at you real fast. No, oh dude, the gla Whenever you get people in the crucible with glaive, it's hilarious. Um. Did they do that falling thing. Okay, what well, falling thing? Just like immediately fall down. Oh. Not epic death, but just. Where they just start like tumbling. Down. Oh, T pose fall down. I've never seen that. Okay, never mind. That must have been for something else. Okay. So. In any case. How are you feeling about Crucible this season, or th in general? Uh, 
Well, okay. David. It's it's all right. I haven't played a lot of it, and I'm probably not going to play a lot of it. It's fun. You should play fun. Halo. You should get an Xbox and play Halo. I'm not gonna spend that much. It's just money. 300 bucks, bro. Jesus. Wait, David, don't you have a PC? Case, um. I've been doing a lot of PSYOPs Battlegrounds instead, like mostly, so I can't really comment that much on the Crucible. It's alright, I guess. So, the Vanguard playlist got changed to the, to the Vanguard Ops playlist, because it involves Battleground missions from previous seasons now as part of the playlist activities, which is great, because it expands the um, thing. The, it expands the overall number of activities available on the Vanguard um playlist or the vanguard ops playlist now which is what we really needed first of all second of all psyops battlegrounds is now the new three-man activity for this season related to operation elbrus i think worth talking about now I, well everybody agrees the vanguard ops changes were good right yeah oh yeah that's pretty much the news on that one <laughs> there th yeah okay yeah we can move on right uh, I was gonna go into it, but it's just gonna be me repeating myself over and over again. So I'm sorry. We didn't we didn't really go over Operation Elbrus, but we went over Witch Queen. Do we want to go over that real quick? Yeah, Operation Elbrus was a great story. I really enjoyed it. I like the the seasonal stories generally more than I like the expansion stories. I feel. This one was really Crow done fucked up oh, and had mercy for the hive, and it was just so stupid and became so dumb. Crowden fucked up and was born. He really just ruined it for everyone right there. It really fucked it up. Yeah. <sighs> um, so the general story for Operation Elbrus, and I think this is a good one, is that... Uh, ooh, that's interesting. Um, the the Lightbearer Hive are still in operation after um Savathun's death and we need to figure out why so we we use the scions mental psionic capabilities to kidnap hive and then mind torture them until they give us information and crow doesn't like this because this, the, the feeling of mind torture makes him feel like well, he doesn't like mind torture because he was mind tortured when he was aldrin and that made him crazy and Shit. uh and he remembers that now because he says has aldrin's memories but like he's just super back ass word fucking trying to like have mercy for these creatures because we're putting them in a really disgusting situation of tormenting them for information and you know he feels like the vanguard has fallen from grace in this sense by having to do something so drastic now, the ultimate plan for the Hive is that they're going to s take over the Red Keep and from there stage an offensive against the um, against Earth, and then they're going to take over and just genocide all the humans, and then they're just going to live underneath the Traveler, and they'll be the Guardians. That's, That's their right. plan. Again, they're going to cut off her fucking face and wear it, now. and we're supposed to be okay with that and have sympathy for it for them. We, exactly, Kwame. We are the Guardians now. We're the Guardians now. I can. He didn't know all this because he was too busy killing the fucking Scion who happens to be Keitel's best friend who is helping us with the operation. Brutally, brutally murdering the brutally, brutally murdering the Scion. Yes, it was pretty gross. Here, do you want should I read the lore tab? Since we're covering Operation Elbrus? Somebody cover me. Well, I mean, okay. All right, I got, I got the gun. Neat. Oh, all right. Um, shoot, I have to think about where exactly we were in the. Oh, well, you know what? The little story in the middle of it, where Saladin was explaining. Uh, how do I say this? Mercy. His experience with mercy. Yeah, and. Because, ah, God, that, that was a good story, and that was all lightless stuff. I was going to say, that those weren't even guardians or warlords. That was just a village and thieves and bandits, pretty much. That was really freaking cool. And also, really... Now I can't find the fucking lore book. Shit. <laughs> it's fine. A mature and emotional of, of Saladin, because when he had to shoot that... 
person, wh whoever it was, because he didn't really mention it. Um, his facial expressions were really strong and really sad. You guys you remember that? When it really you think she'll make right it? afterwards? You think she'll make an appearance? No, I think she's at dead. At some point? Like hella dead. I mean, like, she may be, like, hella dead, but, like, a descendant or something, or maybe, like, I feel like something from that. Who's dead? Mercy. He... Oh, oh, that he, chick? He... oh, yeah, no, she's dead. Yeah, she's hella dead. I don't know. Was that in, like, was that something covered in, like, Destiny 1? I just don't know why they would add that in there randomly. You know, at the beginning, I thought it was going to be Lady Ephrodite, because I don't know anything about her story. Well, I, I don't know much about her story, but then, very quickly, I, it, it kind of seemed like... I have the lore page here ready. Okay, and this is for, once again, this is the lore page for... Uh, Operation Elbrus for the Quintessence book. It's number okay. four of five. Uh, so, it, I'll read you up to a point, or I'll, I'll kind of cliff notes this up to a point, and then I'll read it out, and then we can uh, continue on. So, this is how bad Crow fucks up. He decides he's going to go over and just kind of trick his way into the main room where he's where the holding tanks are for all of the Lucian Hive that are under our uh, uh, psionic torture methods, which have, I think the, there are four at this point. Uh, he goes in, he tells them that he's going to you know, take care of some shit. He lies to get in. He gets in. He sees the override shutdown immediate command on the computer, pauses for a moment, uh, and then, well, well, here, here, let me just start reading here. He paused for a moment, imagining what Saladin's reaction would be, but he of all people should understand, after all, Crow said quietly to himself, the right path isn't always easy to find. Uh, Crow executed the command. He walked towards the scion as the lights of the machine began to turn red in sequence. Let's get you out of here, friend, he said as the scion began to stir. It blinked slowly and opened its eye. Crow smiled and waved. Good morning, he said. Would you like to go get some ramen? The pulsing current running through the tubes in the back of the scion's head slowed and Crow winced as the white-hot pinpoint of pain stabbed into his mind, shrieking a single word, clear and impossibly loud. Stop. The machine sputtered. Sparks erupted from the central hub. Cracks spiderwebbed across the holding tanks. Electricity arced from the control paddle and Crow staggered backwards. Without warning, the energy current in the tube suddenly reversed. Waves of blue quickly flowed back towards the Scion. He was pulling at the cables connecting him to the chair when the first blast of feedback hit him. His body spasmed with pain. Wave after wave of psionic energy pounded into the base of the Scion's skull. His muscles stood out in sharp relief as he pulled against the cables his hands desperate claws his face stretched with terror the pulses thrummed faster and faster and the scion began to scream a high thin noise he beat at his own head with one spindly hand and reached the other out towards crow crow reached back as another wave of energy hit the scion bursting his retina turning his eye into a muddy black sphere Crow recoiled in horror, his mind pierced by unimaginable pain as he fell to the floor in a heap. The machine groaned, hissing smoke and holding tanks boil the holding tanks boiling, the hive bodies inside dancing, dancing grotesquely in the roiling fluid. The blaring sirens began to overpower the horse sustained screaming. Something snapped inside the machine and it shuddered to a stop and finally silence. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. <laughs> That's brutal. I know. I had yeah. no idea. And you know what? The best part is, like, Crow was just like, all right, I'm going to get you out of here. Let's go get some ramen. And right. Just like, severe fuckage. Like, it's bad. Yeah. The worst. What are you doing? Like, Please, God, why? You, you, Please, you, God, you, stop. I made a mistake, and I'm going to die in the worst way possible, and I know it. Right. Um, it's real bad. And then he just, like, sees all of it happen right in front of him and just... And then I don't know from how that... long it was between the time that the Scion died and he and Saladin got there. But I mean, I think but he was, he was sitting there for a down, while, just like, yeah. Yeah, just not having a good time. And then from, that science, just from that Scion's perspective... It's like, you sick fuck, why are you smiling at me right now? I am in pain. <laughs> You've any idea what you've done? I had no idea. 
that's it. You had no idea. It's a little yeah. culture. Yeah, lack of cultural understanding. But because of that, um, Kaido requested what? A, 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 a life for a life, basically. A life for a yeah. Life, right. Exactly. But instead of crow dying, it was. Uh, Saladin sacrifices Saladin. himself, and in recognition for his bravery, she instead conscripts him into her army as the new Brachus and war member of the War Brachus Council. Forge. He becomes Brachus Saladin Forge, and then, after like two weeks... He gets promoted like six times and now he's like Valis Salad in Forge because a bunch of Cabal dudes wanted to talk shit and he was like, talk shit, get hit, pussy. And he fucked them all up. All without the light, right? All without the light. In just, just a normal like, totally battle. <laughs> it was a good time. Well, so, I, I mean, in a way, this is really just a mission about how Saladin knows how to climb the ranks and do things, you know, keep doing what he loves and that's killing people. <laughs> I suppose so. Killing people without mercy, yes. Enemies of humanity, indeed. But more importantly, and I, I mentioned it in, in the last podcast podcast as well, but it's just really so important and so freaking cool that there is a human with light on Keitel's war council. And Yeah, no, just, things are changing. You know, there's a suggestion that there are, you know... Big things coming because of all the things that are shifting around right now, and that's fucking that's neato. Cool. Mm -hmm. So exactly. With that, I mean that more or less I think covers most of the Witch Queen. Yeah. I'd say altogether, I'm I wish there was more to it. You know, I, I was kind of hopeful that there would be a little bit more, that it would feel a little bit more comprehensive, but you know, that's mm. just how it is sometimes, especially with Destiny. Mm. Um I'm glad that the season... What the fuck? How do I make this work? I'm glad that the season is short and that I've already completed my season pass so I can go off and play other things. You know, and like, I don't have to feel bad for it. I played a lot of Destiny, and so I don't feel too bad about giving it a break. You know, I I'm excited about what comes next, but I think that I was expecting there to be a lot more on offer from the jump. And that probably was my fault more so than Bungie's. But uh, ultimately, I'm still here. I still love Destiny a lot. I think I was expecting a lot more out of the, the whole package. But, you know, whatever. Life goes on. Um, how do you guys feel about it in, in total? Witch Queen. This coming year. It was... Well, what do you mean this coming year? You mean like what to look forward to? Yeah, the Witch Queen and then by extension what to look forward to. Um, okay, so I am looking forward to more Witch Queen stuff. I am looking forward to Lightfall stuff because in the Game Developers Conference it said that there's a picture that was posted that kind of looked like uh, Lightfall is coming in 2022. So we'll see what's going to happen there and how that's going to happen and how is going to be a part of this but i really enjoy witch queen i obviously wish wish there was more like we said but um i feel like you liked it a lot more than i did and you just have I, not I said do. because like it's the dis dissenting opinion like you're you're free to to, to 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 disagree with me of course i'm no 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 it was just the um the the legendary campaign that I, like I said, I really enjoyed, but what killed it was those things that we talked about. That's what the big difference in opinion was, I think. Because you just hated it. I did not. I wasn't crazy about it, no. Okay, alright, yeah. Um, but yeah. in terms of just the story, I was upset with their choices, but went with it. And now we're here, and now I just want to see what else we're going to get to. Because right now... <sighs> Yeah, okay. Lots so of they, questions. Lots more yeah, questions. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They rele they revealed so much stuff, but they revealed so much stuff that leads to so many more answers, but answers that can be probably Like those those answers had to come so you could ask more questions right afterward that we would kind of understand. Like it was just answers in the service of more setup. Yeah. I was just gonna say I feel like those answers were only provided so we could have more questions to ask. 
but there's a little bit of wrap up and at the same time we can see like now we got a glimpse of what we can assume to be the main and I think the main enemy of the uh, of the light I guess so like the, the true the face of darkness we saw the witness that's what I'm talking about here we know well we as players we didn't even talk about the raid either and Ralk and the just like the vow of the true. disciple raid well, and all of that neither of us have played none of us have played it so when we do we will eventually and i'm looking forward to that but well i mean i'm I just think. saying like you're right there there's more there there's some enemies and disciples and things that like are just new and exciting and and that's there and it's great but like also there was so much built up like even from savathun's perspective where there was like it felt like there was going to be like almost like a, a dialogue between us and savathun moving forward even if she was an enemy even like you know, kind of like as an evil like Bond villain, you know, where she oh, was just going to be oh, taunting she's, us. Mm -hmm. She's definitely coming around. I'm getting. I'm guessing that one of these seasons, before the next DLC drops, whether it's season of the, what's this? This not, not in this, this season, is but risen, right? Yeah, I mean, this, this is, is risen. risen. Yeah, yeah. But the same way Crow made a comeback, I feel like she's going to make a comeback and. I don't think she'll be on our side, but I feel like we'll be able to kind of go, probably come back here to this throne world, and and interact with her here, and, and have some sort of missions or something. Yeah, you, you're probably right on that one. To come back to some degree. Witness. I mean, we had it. We can't talk to her. We, to be honest, she died. And then we found out that she technically tricked the witness and all that shit. And then we weren't able to talk to her, you know, after. So, we don't necessarily know how the Guardian feels about all of that. But now I'm talking about, you know, how the Guardian would feel instead of now how we would feel. So, whatever. That's right. different. Definitely different story. Yeah, so I, I am the Guardian, goddammit. There's, there's, there's always... It just depends on... on Again, and I'm tossing this. I'm tossing this whole dissension in the vanguard thing out there. If 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 uh, there's valuable if there's valuable information to be had, we all see that Akora will go to whatever lengths necessary to get it. If it's gonna help. Yeah. So yeah. if she, so and, and, it may be a situation. Doesn't approve all the time. Zavala doesn't approve all the time. So we might we might be doing this kind of sneakily coming to the throne world to talk with Savathun. What information oh, she'll have oh, for I us, I'm not sure. Yeah. A really good point there, yeah. Damn but it. I honestly don't even think it ends at the witness. I'm pretty sure there's somebody he We're gonna get to a cut I feel like we're gonna get to a cutscene somewhere. We're gonna get to a cutscene somewhere and he's gonna be bowing down to somebody else called the the benevolent the judge. Or something like that. <laughs> the judge. The witness, the judge, the jury. The bailiff. The bailiff. No, it's all the bailiff. The bailiff is the big bad. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I, you know, I, actually, that's actually pretty intriguing. And yeah, you know, I think that the storyline between them, you know, fighting Ikora and uh, Zavala has more to do with when Lightfall comes up, there being a divided vanguard. But that might have to do with the, le the lengths people go to to, you know, get ahead here. And Ikora has definitely shown a willingness to, to go on a radical path with that so who knows that's a really good point to bring up though good good for you for even mentioning it because i uh -huh. i hadn't right. even thought about that but no those two like you know historically speaking of course zavala is very rigid and ikora is like meh about a lot of things she's she, she likes to turn her back or to, to to kind of turn her head away from things and be like i didn't see it it didn't happen you know All right like I keep taking things back to Forsaken, but she was all for go get that revenge. You know, so I was like, we don't really do oh, that. Right. She was like, nah, you go get that revenge. I'll cover for you. <laughs> right. It's important. Because she's fucking awesome. That's why. And then we spent the whole time doing she's this. Awesome. But that's what's going to make that decision real hard when you have to choose between Zavala and Nakor. Which way you going? Um, Man, that's that is pretty difficult. I probably right. would go with Ikora, but I would miss Zavala a lot. But you would miss Zavala a whole hell of a lot. Of course, it would all tie back in toward the end. Yeah, at the end, it would all be better. 
Yeah, but that's just one of the things I love about Destiny. Like, it's an ever-expanding universe, and there's so many things. Like, there's not quite anything else like it, so you can go however you want to with it and then always bring it back when you feel like you've gone too far. Yeah, I mean, and I'm sure we're going to eat our words on this one because there's a big, there's a lot of suggestion that the tower won't always be there. But, like, you know, in a lot of ways, that every, you come back to the tower and everything's right and normal. Like, yeah... Kate died, but the tower still exists, and that's where like we do our business, and everybody else is acting normal. And that's more of mechanics than anything else. The tower is still our hub area, but like, you know, it's hard to do anything serious or dramatic, and then all go back to the tower and everything's great. It's kind of like, you know, an episode of uh, an old like Cheers or some shit. You know, it it always has to get right, go back right. to point zero. It always has to get reset. To point A uh, at, at the end, so you guys can do it again the next week, and that is kind yeah, of the whole be, point of Destiny. I wouldn't be surprised for like, um, for example, if the tower does get overtaken, we have to kind of move, kind of like similar to how Destiny. I mean, we did it once well, before, we, yeah. Yeah, so we don't talk about those dark times when Destiny first came out, but when it first came out, you know, we had to run off to Earth, you know, and then we. We'd not run off to Earth, run off to a different part of the Earth. What was it, the farm? The farm, Is that what yeah. It was? Which farm, doesn't even right. exist anymore. Yeah. It doesn't exist anymore, but those farm days did exist where that was the hub, and then we got the tower. So I could very easily see us, like, if the tower gets overtaken or destroyed, we go to some, I don't know, maybe we go back to where Saladin, what was the place where the Iron Banner, Iron, the. Bannerfall? Bannerfall. Maybe we go there. Who knows? That'd be great. Everybody hates that map. <laughs> we just use that for the tower. I think that's also kind of what the old tower looked like, but I don't remember anymore. Um, yeah, but we go there, and then toward the end of the season, once you've gotten through the campaign, you unlock the new t- updated tower or whatever, and or maybe in a different season, you know, they re- 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 revitalized the tower, and it's different, but it's pretty much the same hub area. So just a way to yeah. kind of refresh the game. No, I, I, I'm I'm all for it. Well, I mean, it depends on how they do it, right? If it's like a genuine thing, then fuck yeah, sure. That, but now, like, now that's the thing. That's it has to be done the right way. Because then if not, all the veterans are going to be like, we've already done this before. Why are you just going to take us back to the tower, you know? The same thing. It's new. It's nothing new. Yeah. Right. Why do I have to do it? Well, I think that concludes the podcast for the most part. We did a good job of covering everything. You know, we actually took about the same amount of time, but we were definitely more focused in our approach, and that's what matters the most to me as far as our our product goes. So thank you for joining us and indulging me one more time on this one. Um, Indulgence! It's been fun. It's been a good time. I, I love talking about Destiny when I'm not always strapped for time, which is literally always now. But, um... No, this is cool. I'm going to I'm going to fuck off and go play Halo though. <laughs> for right yeah. now. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, that sounds great. Thank you for being here in any case and joining us for this fog class. Absolutely. I hope you guys are enjoying Witch Queen because overall we still are. Yeah, I mean, so I I'm always getting on to playing game. with my friends. I just nice. said I'm always getting on to playing with my friends. I'm know, always happy to be good. playing with my friends is what I should have said. Um, so yeah, I mean, Destiny, Destiny is, uh, it's enduring. Like, you know, regardless of how I feel about it, Skill Up had a review on Destiny Witch Queen, and he was not super happy about it. But he goes, you know, regardless of how I feel about Destiny, it's in me at this point. And so I, there's no point in me sitting here complaining like I'm not going to play it. And that's exactly how I feel. Like, I'm bitching, but I'm still here, making a podcast about it, no less. So c- clearly, I'm in it for the yeah. long haul. <laughs> And I hope you guys are too, and you're enjoying it as well. You know, maybe you don't know. Not everybody has to be as critical as I am. So I do definitely hope that those of you that are out there playing it are liking it. Yeah, definitely. We'll yeah. Sometime. No, I'm just kidding. We're terrible. Well, man, any uh, any any uh, <coughs> closing statements or final goodbyes you want to say? Uh, not final goodbye. Uh, you're not dying. <laughs> I hope not. Thank yeah, thank ho- you for me, being me too. Here, yeah, no, thank you for being our special guest. Super man, extra, thanks. extra special guest. Thanks for having me, man. It was just a good time. Got to talk some Destiny. Get to throw some crazy ideas out there. Love it. Like I said, I love to doing this kind of stuff. It's always fun. Last words. Last words I will say. Um, remember, Guardians, put your lucky pants on two legs at a time. You wouldn't be lucky if you didn't. Wouldn't be lucky if you didn't. 
All right, guys. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Oh, man, I wasn't recording. No, I'm joking. <laughs>